Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the last section of 7.3 Notes. Today we're going to be discussing predicting the products of decomposition reactions. So far we've talked about predicting the products of single replacement reactions, and we have talked about double replacement reactions, and today we're going to finish off with decomposition reactions. So, first thing that you should know is that it is actually really difficult to predict the products of decomposition reactions, which is why um, we kind of wait for the end to do them. So here's the rules you are going to follow. Um, you have to categorize the type of compound that is decomposing before you can predict the products. So the first category of compound that you might see is a binary ionic compound. So remember, a binary compound is made up of two elements, just two types, and so it would then decompose into its elements. So if it's made up of two elements, it would decompose into the two separate elements, element one and element two. So an example, this is mercury two oxide, which is binary, it has just mercury, and just oxygen, and it decomposes into just mercury, and, so our plus is our separator, oxygen. So it's no longer together in a compound, it is now separated into its elements, and since oxygen is a diatomic element, it is signified by an O2 rather than just an O. In words, we would say mercuric oxide or mercury 2 oxide makes mercury plus oxygen. So notice that the ide ending is dropped because it is now an element, not an ion in a compound. The second type of compound is a metal carbonate. So that metal can be any metal on the periodic table, and then it is attached to the polyatomic ion carbonate. So for example, um, a metal carbonate is always going to break down into that metal oxide and carbon dioxide. So notice that it doesn't break down. It's not like the first group. We don't get metal plus carbonate because carbonate isn't an element. It's a polyatomic ion and it's not stable by itself. So it breaks down into the metallic oxide and then it liberates carbon dioxide gas. So as an example, this is calcium carbonate, CaCO3. And so when you see a carbonate, Okay, so that's the CO3 part. So remember, calcium is plus 2 and carbonate is minus 2. Um, that is always going to break down into the, that's the metal, is our calcium. So we're going to get the oxide and then always carbon dioxide. And remember, we show gas formed by putting this little up arrow. And so we've got our formula equation. Again, CA is going to be plus 2 minus 2. And then your carbon dioxide is CO2. That's a covalent compound. So that's the pattern for all metal carbonates. It's always going to make the metal oxide plus carbon dioxide. So no matter what your metal is, that's the products you're going to get, the oxide and carbon dioxide. So we have one more category, and these are your chlorates, metal chlorates, so a metal chlorate is always going to make a metal chloride plus oxygen. So it's very similar to the carbonate, but instead of like calcium carbonate, we would have calcium chlorate, and that's going to break down into its chloride and oxygen. So as an example, potassium chlorate, okay, so potassium is our metal, is going to make potassium chloride, so we go from eight to ide, plus oxygen, and then again, it's a gas, so we would draw an up arrow to show that that gas is released. And so for our formula equation, look how we have the chlorate. Chlorate is always ClO3, so you're going to be looking for that ClO3 at the end of your formula, or chlorate, and it, again, it doesn't break into potassium plus chlorate, because chlorate doesn't exist by itself. It's very reactive. So it breaks down into potassium chloride, which is much more stable, and then releases oxygen gas. 
So any chlorate, any metal chlorate is going to follow that same pattern. So what you want to look at is what you have, and then you just follow the rules for how it breaks down. So here's some examples. Oh, these are the wrong examples. Hold on just a second. Okay, so here's some examples that I'm going to go through with you, and we're going to start at the top here. And the very first thing you want to do is look at what is decomposing and what one of those three categories that compound falls into. So this is diphosphorus pentoxide. So diphosphorus pentoxide would be P2O5. So of those three types, this is number one. This is a binary um, compound. So it's going to break up into just its two elements. So our two elements are simply phosphorus, oops, phosphorus, and oxygen. And notice I changed the ending from "-ide to oxygen because it's no longer in a compound. So if I was going to write the formulas, diphosphorus pentoxide, we said is P2O5. Phosphorus isn't diatomic, so we can just leave it as P, but oxygen is, so it would be O2. And then if you wanted super extra bonus points, you could go back and you could balance this sucker. So I would do that by putting a, let's see, I put a 2 right here. And I put a 5 right there to make 10 oxygens apiece. And then I put a 4 right there for phosphorus. And I'd be done. So there's my word equation, phosphorus and oxygen, separating into its elements. And here is my formula equation. Next, I have magnesium chlorate. So there is my key right there, chlorate. So remember, if it's a chlorate, that's not binary, so I can't say magnesium plus chlorate. That's not how it works. Chlorate is a polyatomic ion, and it's way too reactive for it to be by itself. So the pattern is we take the metal, and it's going to be a chloride now. So instead of magnesium chlorate, we're going to get magnesium chloride. There is a fire drill, so I'm going to have to pause here for a second. But our second part would be oxygen. Okay, see if you can write the formulas for that and you can check it with what I get here after the fire drill is over. All right, so here's what I got. Um, magnesium has a plus two charge and chlorate is a minus one, so that's why I needed two chlorates. And same thing over here, magnesium is a plus two and chloride is a minus one, so I needed MgCl2. And oxygen, as always, is diatomic. Now, I did not balance this yet. Um, but let's see, I've got 1 mg, 1 mg, 2 cl's on the left, 2 on the right, 6 oxygens on the left, so I'll make that 6 over here. Last but not least, we have a carbonate. So again, it's not binary, so we have to break it up into its pattern. Instead of lithium plus carbonate, a metal carbonate is always going to become the oxide, so we're going to have lithium oxide plus carbon dioxide. Okay, so those are your patterns. So again, it's not difficult if you just think about what you have to start with, and that's going to dictate what you finish with. Now, for formulas, lithium is a plus one. Carbonate is always a minus two. So it should be Li2CO3. Lithium oxide Lithium is a plus one, oxygen is a minus two, so it should be Li2O. And then carbon dioxide, of course, is CO2. Now this is already actually balanced, as most of these will be. Um, two Li's, a C on each side, and three O's, one, two, three, O's. Okay, so that's it. We're going to do some practice here very shortly. Um, but now you have all your notes for predicting different chemical reactions. All right. Have a great day, afternoon, or evening, and I will see you soon.